Look at the dexterity, the musical composition, amazing, genius, known as Fela and Nicola Pacuti, right there. Taking it back to 1975 from the album Expensive-ish. That's right. Water, no get enemy. All right, Fela and Nicola Pacuti with the Africa 70 back in 1975. And the classics come to you right here on Classic FM 94.3 Abuja. We are the only station that plays every song you know. My name is Ete Kamba Etuk. It's the Classic Morning Show. All right, we're in for a great time. More great conversation. Tuesday, 26th of March, 2024. And uh, I know I, I know I've always claimed to be a Lagos boy. I always brag about how you know I went and you know I was in Lagos. This one carrying Lagos on my head. Well. <laughs> There are people who have bona fide rights, the original sons of the soil of Lagos, and uh, it's my pleasure because uh, I have a special guest, Nigerian businessman, businessman, politician, and of course, uh, he's done amazing things in the realm of tourism, all right? Starting back in 1992, and uh, at that point in time, he was actually closely working with our current president, Ola Ahmed Tinubu. All right, at that time he was senator and that was how the trajectory started kept going on became managing director of the number plate production authority of state of lagos in uh in, in, in 2014 he became the special advisor of central business district of lagos to brf now that was not all after that got into um, where we're going to be talking about tourism especially as dg of the nigerian tourism development corporation and launched Tour Nigeria. Now, having a background in economics and geography, you can see where the locations and everything will blend into financial aspect, how the budgets work for it all. All right, food flavor, one Lagos fiesta, and so many other uh, festivals around Nigeria from the Ogidi Ichimu Festival in Kogi and the Oshun Shogu Festival. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome Mr. Fonon Shaw Koka. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Uh, very easy going. Um, he's wearing his white shirt. I'm wearing my white native shirt. I feel like we're twins, even though he's native and, <laughs> and his white. But it's a pleasure to have you here. Um, I've been looking forward to it and also uh, having come to Abuja and seeing all that you've done. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind is, you know, how you forayed into into the tourism industry. Um, I think for. The little get togethers we used to have at home as a family. I enjoyed entertaining and, and some sort of service. Um, I never planned, it, it never crossed my mind that I would work uh, in tourism, um, nor for government, okay. although my late father worked for government. Um, so one thing just led to another. Um, I think my first real thing was um, a cafe in Lagos, then a nightclub, La Casa in Lagos. La Casa. Um, then a beach resort, La Casa as well. Okay. Then of course, La Casa, uh, uh, Brown's Cafe, the Right. And then things just morphed. Um, I think I'm more known for that private sector of hospitality mm. work than, than working for government. Okay. Certainly, certainly, I know I've seen, um, I know that uh, at some point in time, Matilda Duncan, I've seen, I know, uh, you, know you know her, Matilda Duncan, who used yes, to be yes, here, yes. yes, yes. So I see her sometimes at the bridge, and I know she's been part of some of the events, and she's, yes. so she's always, you know, talking very highly of you. So I was like, ah, which day will you invite me <laughs> <laughs> to all of these syndics? But mm -hmm. very, very interesting, because I feel like for leadership, you must show pedigree in certain aspects of, you know, uh, the sector that you're in, maybe in tourism or in business, you've shown that in how you are, in, you know, very, very vibrant in hospitality, and then it has now translated to, to government or part of be seeing that that can translate to how you also serve in, in, in that capacity. So for me, I think it's a testament to what you've done well in the business sector that you're in, in, in politics now. Uh, so, so the tour Nigeria is the one I, I but how did this concept start? What led to the uh, creation of Tour Nigeria? Um, <clears throat> most countries uh, uh, that are 
a lot of tourism as their main breadwinner. Um, they always have a slogan. Malaysia truly Asia. Malaysia is truly in Asia. What is this? Right. Incredible India. Well, Incredible yeah, India. That, that was just at yeah. the top of my head. Uh, um, so we just thought, what is Nigeria's own selling point? And, and it's go around Nigeria. Nigeria is a very diverse country. Right. Um, from the people to the cultures to even the landscape, the desert of the north to the um, rainforest of, of the delta. Um, and one of the things that has always struck me is that Nigerians love Nigeria. Nigerians love Nigerians. Nigerians love being Nigerians, but Nigerians don't know Nigeria. Mm. They don't really bother to go around Nigeria in this journey of discovery. Um, yes, we'll go for somebody's wedding or some funeral, you know, yes. but we, we don't really know Nigerians. And um, until I came to Abuja, I knew we couldn't say Yoruba people because Yoruba people are not one. There is, you know, Tifre, Toshu, Eba, you know, things like that. And it's actually coming to this job in Abuja that made me understand that Hausa is just a language. They're different people, you know, from Kano to Kutuna to Zanfara to Sokoto, they're all very different. Not one of them is Julian Block. Right. And if you go to the East, they are Boyman, <laughs> they are Nambra man. Uh, the Enuguma, they're all very different people. So, right. you know, that rich diversity is something that I, I thought Nigeria was supposed to speak to, yeah. that tour Nigeria and explore the Nigerian flavors, the flavors of Nigeria. So that also led to the sub-brand Nigerian flavor. The way we dress, the way we speak, the way we dance, what we eat, everything is a Nigerian flavor. And we wanted to celebrate uh, 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 the Nigerian flavor touring Nigeria, just as simple as Malaysia, truly Asia. Uh, very interesting because, like, like because we don't take the time to now go to these places and know people, we just generalize. Mm -hmm. And so you can find somebody from the north offended when you say uh, house that person. Yeah. You know, and things like, oh, you know, Yoruba, like you said. Now, for me, what, what would you say, what, what would you, how would you describe the Nigerian? Because you must have traveled, I mean, gone on these tours. I, I'm even, I mean, I'm like, I wish I, I could travel and all of that. But what would you say, describe to Nigeria? For someone who doesn't know, it's really someone who would say, I am, uh, no, I traveled to this barrier and I went here now. But you didn't really explore, you didn't really feel the place. So, what, how, in your words, you say, um, the Nigerian, whether from the north or the east or from the west, I think one clear characteristic is that can do spirit mm. that uh, uh, never give up never say never i can i will i will try the nigerian is not a lazy man um we believe in education um, we believe to a greater degree than most other you know people I can speak to in, in terms of self-help and in terms of helping others. I always say to the foreigners, non-Nigerians when I'm out of the country, that they will be shocked at how hospitable and welcoming Nigerians are to foreigners. It's just unfortunate that the um, global media has labeled us uh, in ways that I think it's unfair and doesn't specifically speak to the character of the Irish. Uh, so uh, definitely that means that there is, that's where the room for speaking to who the Nigerian is, our hospitability and all of that, that uh, comes to bear. Uh, when it comes to the, the, the potential, um, what's the potential so far? I mean, I'm looking at different tourist attractions, I'm looking at traveling to certain places. I know that there are certain factors that have negated some of these things. I know I wanted to go to Kaduna at some point and, and I was discouraged I know I wanted to go <laughs> somewhere so what would you say are the challenges for our tourism tell me um, I know I know where you were going was the issue of security but Nigeria is not the murder capital of the world it's America Nigeria is not the rape capital of the world Nigeria is not even the 
internet fraud capital of the world. But we, we carry a label, we're given a label that we so readily accept that we are this, we are that. There's nowhere in the world you will go to that you don't have security challenges. But we're not at war. But the way it is described, the insecurity in Nigeria, no. That nobody is going to walk into a mall and shoot you. Or into your child's school and kill, you know, 30, 40 people. Okay, we have a security challenge that we are dealing with on a daily basis. It doesn't mean that the whole country is, is in flames and, and, and we're like Ukraine and nobody must come to Nigeria. That is a very unfair level that Nigeria has suffered from. And we should really dimension it and say, we have issues in one, two, three, four states, but it doesn't mean that 36 states are, uh, you know, uh, inaccessible. Yes. Um, yes. Look at FCT, for example. FC, FCT has the best infrastructure. It has lowlands, it has farms, it has mountains, it has cross rock, it has Katampi Hill, it has mm. a children's zoo. All not in the best shape, right. but the possibility is there. Right. What is our national stadium doing, you know, with cows grazing in it? Have you not seen Burner Boy in the stadium? Mm. Is that stadium different from this? Mm. Or whiskey that the O2, is it different from the Venodrome that we have? We, we have a lot of infrastructure that is just not deployed to be doing the kind of things it can do and, and generate the revenues that, that are possible. Um, yes. So underfunded as it may be, a general lack of political will to push our tourism to the forefront of income generation for Nigeria the spirit of competition overrides that of collaboration. And post-COVID, this is not what we should be doing. For sure, it's uh, it's something that now speaks to what can be done. I know that uh, part of the reason why we like some of the documentaries we see, you know, and all that is the way it's done, talking about Nat Geographic and the rest. What can we do? What is the potential for us to really, really explore all these beautiful aspects of our tourism? I think a lot has already been done. First of all, um, we have changed the law of tourism, which was archaic. Right. Um, it was like putting brand new tires on a 504 and expecting it to compete with a Ferrari. It just wasn't going to work. So we've got a new law. We asked for a new ministry. We've got a new ministry. Right. We've got a minister. So. We are actually ready for the business of business tourism. Is the the and business and of tourism. Business, yes. yeah. um, what is mitigating against tourism now is the funding. Hmm. Um, we spend so much on salaries, a bit on running costs, when it comes to the capital development of things like, even in Abuja here, Katampe here, center of Nigeria, Ushafa, da, da, Dam, that could be a great water resort, uh, 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 Jabi Lake, right. you know, what, what is the point of building houses, residences around Jabi Lake? It's the only water body uh, you know, we really, really have around here. Yeah. Uh, uh, Cross Rock, sure. what infrastructure is there? Some of those little, you know, the, the children's zoo, those are little things that, uh, are possible in terms of investment for Abuja. Abuja also has a great road network right. that allows you to hold a function, say, at the stadium where people from Nasarawa, uh, uh, Kaduna, Zara, everybody would descend into Abuja and be gone in no time because the road networks are good in terms of getting traffic in and yes. out. Um, Abuja is also government. At the weekend, government town goes to sleep. But Abuja has developed a new life, a new spirit, that it's a great place for a weekend. And normally I go back to Lagos for the weekend, but now I spend most of my time here in Abuja. So there's vibing. Abuja is vibing, that's for sure. Uh, I realized that I needed a little bit more calm and sanity after carrying yeah. Lagos on my chest. Ah, Lagos boy, these are, we carry ginger, come on. I said, bro, <laughs> you need to calm down. Your, your 40s here, you're trying to settle down. So 
make sure that you're in a sana more you know calm town and, and, and abuja has that i i, I know that there's certain places that you mentioned that i want to go i've not even been and i want to go there how easily accessible how affordable as well are these you know these, these, these places because i know that some of them might that might be a factor for some people who want to explore i know there's nika art gallery i've heard about the beautiful place uh Ahmad farms you know so how i don't know if there's any sort of way that is being made to be easily accessible to to the abujerians or the bujites you know every, everywhere is pretty accessible yeah. even okay. the, the guys that um, niger hikers who go hiking in right. the areas, you know no hills around abuja everywhere is access, accessible in niger okay. i mean in abuja cost well that's a that's a national thing <laughs> national <laughs> factor i I, uh, um, I go to the market here at times just to get a feel of what things truly cost yes mm -hmm. things are more expensive mm -hmm. but i don't think abuja is as expensive as lagos lagos mm -hmm. is i think the, the, the population pressure just makes everything exactly. there crazy um, i was speaking to my son the other day and he was telling me about the prices of drinks in some of the nightclubs in those places <laughs> and i was horrified having once owned a nightclub and now hearing these prices maybe i might go back to that industry uh, well you no longer own one no 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 no, you no, no business oh. uh, uh, I'm going to end up going back to that business because the money seems good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the potential and everything. And, and of course, I mean, with, this, with the standard of class and excellence with which you did what you did. I mean, Nigerians right. like quality. They want value for money. They want to even be sure that they're getting more value than they're paying for because they want to be sure that it's excellent. And they can always say, I'll pay for this. So, uh, no problem on that ground. Now, what, uh, what projects... You know, I mean, on, on besides the ones that you've mentioned, are there any particular problems? I know you mentioned funding, which is necessary. Um, I think depopulating the roads, making sure we have other transport networks that probably help uh, tourism. Are there any projects going on maybe to uh, sort of enlighten people, the government further on the potential and why it's imperative that in times when we have many things that may not be desired, you know, certain challenges that, you know, are putting people down under pressure. This could be a sort of distraction to that. Like, oh, have you been to Hama Farms? Have you seen uh, Nikkei Art Gallery or the Oshafa Rock? It's somewhere to be like, things like that that could just create more awareness for people and kind of just take the edge off. Uh, the, in travel, tour and travel, there's a new team, which is technology. Right. And the days of printing maps and, and doing billboards and banners are, are long gone. Um, the soft power of Nigeria is immense, and we have two brands. There's Tour Nigeria, which is on all social media platforms, and there is Nigerian Flavors, which is also on okay. YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, mm -hmm. everything. Now, um, in terms of awareness, people have become increasingly aware of what is available and it's the digital platforms that have helped uh, achieve that we took we do stakeholders engagements all around the six geopolitical zones where we pretty much go and try and explain the marketing of tourism uh, and to listen to the issues of the tourism industry um, you would find apart from security things like multiple taxation right. uh, um, the cost of doing business in, in Nigeria from Alma Farms to, you know, Nikkei Agari, everybody will have the same comments to make about the regulation, the taxation, and the legislation on which those things are done to them. Um, you will find individuals say they pay about 23 taxes. That, that can't be reasonable. Mm. So um, what we also try to preach is to tell some of the arms of government that if you can't if 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 you can't invest in the infrastructure or you can't invest in the businesses that are ongoing you can take less from them in right. terms of taxation right. so that they get some positive uh, right. in terms of returns for, for their activity um the amount of you were talking about the documentaries we do uh, uh, we have a target audience which is the digitally connected 
Exactly. Young techs are really with disposable income. So the people who make those documentaries for us are the same people that we skip uses to target individuals and you know the particular demographics that he wants to catch. So right. someone like Sheson Oguro of uh, Film Factory does a lot of work for us. Uh, someone like Puffy captures a lot of images for us. So if you see some of our short documentaries right. on Nigeria, especially those on YouTube, you will find that we do capture things in such quality and in a particular way that it resonates with those who we want to you know, reach to reach and to move around Nigeria and explore. Okay. Nigeria. So this is so there's uh, so Tour Nigeria has these channels on YouTube, yes, YouTube, and, uh, Nigeria Instagram, Plus, and TikTok, Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. Uh, okay. And so if I, for instance, wanted to tour Nigeria, how would I? What would I need to do? Go to one of those digital handles and look at what is available. Okay, there are offers and packages. No, 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 no. Nigerians are where <laughs> <laughs> we'll, be, they, we'll be trying to talk to the airlines and the hotels to come together and create one package. We mm. had a package called My Abuja Weekend. Okay, so you had, or it's still on. We, we're trying to rebuild it again. Awesome, awesome. Uh, um, um, hotel and mm. airline ticket packaged into one. You can even throw an Uber into it. Mm. One price for, for the political tourists that come to Abuja once a week, they spend the weekend and they go away. Or oh, for weekends, people who, I mean, Abuja hotels are empty in the weekend. Mm. Aircraft are sitting down on the tarmac, not really doing much business in the weekend. So I say, look, create a package. Right. I, I, I don't own assets, so I can't create those packages, right. but I can encourage the hotels and the airlines to come together mm -hmm. and so. Ebom Icon and Ebom Air. Most government mm. own, you know, entities. Right. Why can't you give me a weekend in Ibom, yeah. in, in, in Uyo, on Ibom Air and Ibom, and you Ibom, know, Ibom I bring, uh, Thank you. <laughs> you know, so, and, and you know, the, the, the culinary delights of, of uh, Uyo. Yes. If you go there for a weekend, you at least you bring, you put on a few kilos. Uyo, <laughs> they'll give you some Afang and Afiaife and, and all oh, of that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> You know what <laughs> yes, so yes, so so it, it's 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 good to see. I, I don't know how they're responding to this. I don't know if it's because the pressures, like you mentioned, that they, they you know they, they just have to make profit. They have to stay afloat, or uh, it's just this is, the system. This the season of competition is long gone. This is the season of collaboration. Collaboration. So instead of both of you, a, a hotel and an airline taking a walk you know, two different pages mm. of a newspaper to advertise. Why don't you come together, create a package and advertise mm. on one page? It's that a greater efficiency for you. That's a brilliant idea. Nobody has taken this on I board. have been helping on it forever. Mm. And I've spoken to the associations that encourage everybody to create packages. Right. Everybody just seems to be in this little silo, silo <laughs> thinking it's me, mm. it's my hotel, I'm here, that's his airline. You know, people can go and buy his ticket and then come to my hotel. How about coming together? Mm. Stronger together. Stronger <laughs> together. Very well said. So I, I mean, these are already preempted some of the questions I would have asked about what you suggest. Collaboration, not competition. You know, ideas that combine your services and give value. Uh, and, and I think these are sellable as well, even if you think from the business perspective. So maybe a mindset shift should would help <laughs> some of these business owners now for 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 someone like me who's really interested in traveling i, I feel like traveling is the best education um when you visit kenya or rwanda you talk about it, it's different from when you did all your research on the internet as much as radio presenters and all of that we we know how to do these things we learn before we come up there but if i went there and i talked about the museum somebody who's been there was ah, this guy you savvy you went there so what would you advise someone who wants to make something with tourism as a business or as a pastime? There isn't really advice. Just look at what's going on. Okay. There are people who run complete tourism companies off social media sites. Mm. They take, they harvest photographs of the locations they want to take you to. Mm. 
they will rent a coaster bus and put some water, some drinks, some food, play some music in it. Load the bus up with like-minded people who want to go to, for example, Shobo Shou, or right. Uborok or whatever it is. The only asset is their telephone. Hmm. Right. And I don't want to mention any of them, but there yeah. are, if you go to Instagram, especially, and Facebook, you will find a lot of digital tourism entrepreneurs right. who just do use the Uber model of right. I own nothing. Right. But when I bring Please. transportation, hospitality, and entertainment together, together. there's a, a company in Lagos called uh, Loving Lagos. They have a van, a bus called Bole Kaja. You know the one with Bole Kaja, Kaja with the wooden okay. back, okay. painted, and they take people <laughs> around Lagos in it. They play mm. good music, they have refreshments, they go from the Abbas Palace to the mosque to the cathedrals. And every time I see people, I see images of it, I find that they are probably like 80% expatriates mm. who are touring Lagos in these buses. So, Nigerians have a good entrepreneurial spirit. They just don't see the tourism industry as a business. Mm. Now, what, what is in the tourism business? It's transportation, hospitality, and entertainment. Are you it's... telling me that air peace is not a business? Right. It is in the, tra in the tourism ecosystem. It is. It is. Transport sure. hotel is not a business. It's in hospitality. Mm. And mm. of course, the, the rich mediums of cultural exchange, the music, the film, the fashion, the food, even mm. our religion. Right. Are all tourism assets that have developed, you know, in, in recent decades mm. that are attractions to Nigeria. Nigeria. Nigeria is difficult to market simply because there's been so much negative. So what negative. we tend to do is market activities that don't speak, speak to those, you know, to that name, mm -hmm. but speak to that. I mean, you, you, you say something about actresses. They are Nigerian. Mm. Our films, our mm. Nigerian films, mm. people like Kula for Lion and, and his new movie, uh, Adekulapo. Amazing. Right, right, right. Amazing stuff. Uh, there is hope. I know that there is hope. Uh, and I do believe that um, for more of this to be known and spread, there should be probably more collaborations with us. Because radio is still an ubiquitous medium in Nigeria today. I know that the internet, social media, Baba Artists will say, are you, are, you, are you marketing? We, uh, <laughs> I mean, me, I'm a tourism businessman now. I'm learning right from you, straight up. You know, so we're open to more of those collaborations. Because, I mean, I've gone the way of saying, so how many collaborations? How many? No, I don't do that. I, I talk direct. So we're open to having those kind of collaborations. We have also, like, there's a segment called Mind Your Language on, on the radio, and we say, a word and people have to say what it means in their language and people love it so much and i'm like mm. but it's not true nobody's go it's just the way you're saying nobody's going ahead to say oh yeah it's a camera it's all we like this let's do this let's mix tourism entertainment and stuff and do something with this so Fantastic. we're open to having conversations where what you're doing is spread beyond the documentaries maybe audio and uh, you know those that can air and even programs like that, so that people are aware it's a constant thing because businesses also understand the value of positioning, branding, and advertising, where you position yourself in, in the minds of the person that once they think tourism, they think about this particular brand of who said what. So uh, congratulations to you on all you've done. Uh, I mean, I can see the passion as well, and that's what leads you to suggest these things, you know, as make these... Um, Council available to people and say, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And hopefully, with more conversations like this, we'll, we'll get people on board because there's a lot of benefit. Maybe they need to make it more uh, accessible or affordable for Nigerians, and then know that since it's business for the expatriates or the high net worth individuals that can afford it, you can now put different, you know, yeah. based on what they can get. But Nigerian, let's know it's our own. You can get this. Come in, know about your country. And and we'll see the how the domestic the domestic market is six times the international. Exactly. When you go to Dubai, what you enjoy there? It's domestic to Dubai, so yes. it's for us to build our own domestic. Mm -hmm. International is just the attachment of an international ticket. That's all. Exactly. Look, look at all the famous brands that consume in Nigeria. They didn't become famous when we the flip of the switch. Mm -hmm. Italians bought Ferraris until Ferrari became a. 
French brought me a guitar and said, Do some of my people. Consume more of what he produced, what is ours. Nigerians spending naira in Nigeria is the cheapest holiday. Even for the expansions traveling abroad, Nigeria is still the cheapest holiday because what is a hundred dollar room in England or America? Which is a hundred and thirty thousand naira room here. So value for money. Mm. Nigeria is a great destination. Nigeria is a great destination. You heard it here first, Mr. Polon Shaw Koka, the DG Nigerian Tourism Development Corporation. They call it authority. So he's speaking with authority too, having been in this industry for this long, from business to you know the marketplace to doing this and saying business government, let's collaborate. There's so much beauty in Nigeria and we need to speak to that, speak to how we can come together, collaborate instead of compete. So it's been a pleasure. Uh, I'm so I'm so starstruck. I, mean, I just have to keep I keep these things together, just from because generally I like to also learn and learn from wisdom. So combining all these your spheres and adventures of life, you know, some life nuggets from you before you before you leave us. Um, a long one. A long one. If it's at your beginning or at your end, that one thing And I'm not talking about any particular religion. He lived to marry one. No bumbum got to buy Sheila in Dubai. In all things, give thanks. Wow, 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 wow. Uh, so, this, this, me, I've taken this one. Uh, and so, if you're listening, you know, I always flaunt my, 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 my language skills. There is God. <laughs> Literally, a little more where there's God. Know that you have a creator. And like you said, um, Bobon Koti, Obashi. Or shop always, give thanks. always give thanks. Always give thanks. Be thankful. Gratitude is the is the release of abundance to come. And that's what you just said. And then the last one was nothing greater than love. Nothing greater than love. Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate you. Thank you. Show us love. We, we love you. Always. Uh, all right. And, and we look forward to having more conversations and more collaborations. Thank you. Definitely, I'll be back. All right, all right. Definitely, he'll be back. It's still class giving life. Four point three. Abuja, the station, the place. Every song you know. My name is It Takes, and this is One Love.